G'day, this is Captain Uber, and this is a Type 11 LMG. This is a Japanese-made light machine gun, first produced around 1922 and would go on to be produced all the way up until 1936 when it was replaced by the Type 96 LMG, which the Imperial Japanese Navy would go on to use primarily as their light machine gun in the Second World War, although this old girl probably saw a little bit of combat in the Second World War as well, mainly probably due to supply shortages. And let me tell you, if you were that poor bastard that was tasked with carrying this heap of shit around, then you'd be in a bit of strife because... It's a bizarre looking weapon, and the function here is interesting because you've got this magazine on the side which has custom animations and stuff in game, which is really cool. We'll get to see those in a little bit, but that's like a hopper mag system there, which allowed a lot of foreign materials to get inside this chamber here, which would cause plenty of reliability issues. Also, it was very difficult to reload this in a timely fashion because of how the hopper system was set up, but that's okay. We've got professional reload animation so we don't have to worry about that in real life but one of the bigger issues or one of the more interesting issues that you may not see at face value here is since this magazine is mounted on the side it'll actually pull the weapon down and sort of unbalance it if it's full of the cartridges so what they did to counterbalance it was move the stock off to the side like that yeah just when you think this thing couldn't get more ugly. It's also got this cool Finn corkscrew barrel though, and I quite like that though. That's, that's kind of aesthetic. But yeah, despite this being a heap of shit in real life, I'm actually thinking this will actually be really, really good in Fallout 4. We're getting 217 damage right now, and that's standard receiver. I'm not exactly sure how we've accomplished that much from standard, but chambering the 308, this is a whole lot of damage on this thing. And like any good light machine gun, you can also make this thing automatic and we can bring that all the way up to 247 although you'd think you'd get a little bit more since the uh, standard is 217 although the advanced receiver that's right you can also make this semi-auto gives you 380 damage give a scope on this thing and you might actually have a professional grade sniping weapon full end game stuff we're going to make this one automatic of course and then we'll move on to the next attachment which is legendary effects legendary modification required to see there is we will not be using them next up we've got the barrels which you can have at 261 that's a shorter barrel which doesn't penalize you as much for range will have a little bit better ap costs in combat this one robachi or whatever the hell that says it's actually just a giant air cooled thing and they've shaved off all of that corner because the iron sights are actually mounted off the side there so when you are aiming down sights if you've got the standard ones on you kind of got your center of vision or the just the vision cut off by the giant hopper magazine and everything so unless you get a reflex sight on this thing this is going to cause issues with aiming because it's a lot of screen you're cutting off there i suppose and we've also got a 487 millimeter barrel which will increase our range and accuracy to its full potential so we'll throw that on and it's moved us straight to the foregrips which you can have no foregrip a skeletal one smla pistol grip which i think is a british rifle smla and you've also got a thompson submachine gun thing which kind of makes this thing cursed you wouldn't like that's a, an american weapon through and through and something in an imperial japanese navy uh, soldier would have used so interesting next up we've got the stocks which you can remove that stock if you don't like it being a lopsided piece of crap or you could have the skeletal version of that or the custom one which is your recoil compensated stock i have that's ap cost but we get to reel in that recoil and that looks kind of comfortable i guess this one not tapered off to the side either so just watch out for the imbalance just kidding you don't have to deal with that your character does, but not you. You're, you're sitting on a keyboard and a controller, so you can be in a nice, comfortable seat. Next up, we've got a underbarrel attachment, including a flashlight and a laser sight. Pick one, but not both. We'll go for our laser sight here. Increase our hip fire accuracy. Exposes the user. Hmm. Wonder if that actually applies. We'll have to see how we go along with that. Next up, we've got barrels. Oh, sorry, muzzles that you put on the end of your barrel. Compensator and muzzle brake for recoil control. Or you could put a suppressor on. We get extra little bit of damage thanks to your ace operator, giving us 309 damage for an automatic weapon right now. That's pretty good. And we've got the sights here, and we can replace them with reflectors, which will be sort of placed on the top. We'll give you a much better sight picture where you're not going to get blocked by 
your own um, sights. Unfortunately, they're directly under the weapon's name, so you can't see them super clearly, but they all are very similar. There's also a couple of scopes in here as well, including a 4 time scope, a 10 time scope for all of your sniping needs, and also a little bit of a night vision scope, complete with a weird-looking lens. I guess that's a light or something. I'm not really sure what's going on there. We just go for some sort of basic reflex sight on this thing because it's an automatic weapon with a suppressor and everything, so... It makes sense. A little bit better AP usage. Unfortunately, you can't turn this into an actual proper magazine. You're stuck with the standard one there. No quick eject variants are able to be uh, applied here. And you get a little bit of extra flavor for different types of ammo. So we've got standard now. Armor piercing will have better armor penetration, but less damage. Frangible will add a little bit of bleeding damage at the cost of a little bit of extra damage off the bullet itself. Fleshette. <clears throat> Fleshette probably is going to split your damage between multiple projectiles. You get a little bit back, but not probably not worth it. And it will also reduce your range a little bit, so accuracy at bats will not be as consistent. Incendiary ammo gives you no damage. In I guess it will just give you the traces and the effects from the legendary incendiary effect, which is not that good. Or you could put explosive on which will require Gun Nut Rank 4 and Rank 2 of Demolition Expert, which is easy to get, but that raises our damage to almost 500 for an automatic weapon platform, so we're going to be crushing with this thing. And if that's not enough for you, you can also increase your damage all the way up to 100% or minus 100% in 20% intervals. If you went all the way, you can get yourself 746 damage, which is pushing it, but it's an option. And fun fact, if you put the minus 100 um, damage modifier on and then go for the standard automatic receiver there You'll go into the negatives and damage and therefore get infinite damage because that's how maths works in Todd Howard land But there's one of our type 11 LMGs. It's an abomination But we'll make some more and we'll see how we go You can craft this weapon on a chemistry workbench if you find it find weapons hyphen type 11 and go into that subfolder You'll need gun nut rank 3 and these materials to put it all together Bam. Righto, so here we are outside of the suspiciously good frame rate immersive Gunners Plaza. Here is the Type 11 LMG in first person. This one's got the reflex sight, powerful auto receiver, suppressor, and explosive rounds, just in case you didn't think it could get as good as that. But yeah, that's what it looks like in first person. The gun bashing animation is just a little bit of a poke forward, which would suit if it had a bayonet on, but right now we're poking with the suppressor. So we better hope that's made out of sturdy materials because uh, that thing might shatter if it's a little bit warm if you bash someone with it. Although you could probably use it just to burn holes in your enemy. Get that little bit of extra burning energy damage. Alright, so elephant in the room about this weapon. The third person animations are... Munted. Now, obviously they're even more munted if you've got the camera looking elsewhere to where you're actually aiming. Um, for all intents and purposes, the bullets will go where you're aiming. If you decide to use it in third person, unless you've got the camera tilted around like that. Then otherwise, they'll just go straight to the ground. But... It appears to be using an animation set that is not designed for the player. That's why the camera is out, and it's how you can get a view like this. Yeah, I'm totally... Yeah, I can see what I'm aiming at. That's fine. But, yeah, it looks like NPC animations. And the worst part is, even if NPCs do use this thing, it's still going to be pointing at the ground like that as it's firing. So, totally immersion-breaking, probably only player-only type weaponry using in third person. So that means no vats if you want to keep your uh, immersion in check, but that's that's just how it's going to be. Anyways, we'll get started. This one is the suppressed sniper version with a 10 times scope, and we'll go to the classic sniper spot here, and we'll start taking heads off a few gunners here. Uh, uh, that was a one-shot headshot kill. We've got a 30-round magazine, and this thing can fire particularly fast for a weapon used for a sniper roll so we can pick off heads left and right totally hit scan projectile no recoil to speak of if you want to hammer on the trigger it might get a little bit gnarly but probably don't have to worry about that that much now this is like a see-through scope but also not a see-through scope but at the same time i'm getting a, a prompt to hold my breath for f but that doesn't do anything as that gunner cartwheels in his death animation classic and if I do actually hold my breath, if I do it now, the gun still wobbles a little bit. So I don't know what's going on there. Perhaps there's a little bit of a miscommunication between 
particular scope to aiming mods, but what have you, what can you do? I'm going to go shoot that dude with a crit. There we go. So like I said, I'm going to have a couple of sh shots and bats here. It's just not going to look good when using this thing in third person, which covers bats as well. So it is what it is. It is unfortunate, but this stuff can be changed and updated along the way and hopefully that's one of their big priorities of fixing as we go along here this is the explosive auto one so you don't really have to aim with this thing suspiciously we're doing 200 damage for the explosive projectiles which is not what you'd see out of your standard unless i'm actually hitting all of these shots but i don't think i am blatantly not also, these guys are going and shooting their anti-material rifles very far. So it looks like the version that I'm using now, it's, um... I'm pressing the overpowered button on this thing. It's a little bit too much, which I guess is going to be a stark contrast of what this thing is like in real life. As you can tell, we've got every single reload off perfectly and in basically zero time at all. So isn't that nice? And we don't have to worry about the counterbalance either with that. Uh, We've trained for this. Anyways, so this one here has the flechette rounds in it, which, as you can tell, has a little bit of a shotgun effect. We're splitting all that damage between multiple projectiles. Don't go into third person, you dingus. That gunner explodes thanks to bloody mess there, which is kind of neat. And I think that guy's over the fence. We'll, we'll worry about him later. But, yeah, this is just uh, the shotgun variant. So... If you've got a weapon like this, if you've got a legendary drop that's wounding, putting the flesh at rounds like that will be absolutely devastating to your enemies. Not that it isn't already, but if you've got anything with a little bit more of a health bar or a little bit more bullet sponginess. I still don't know where that gunner is, but this one has the 3.5 times scope on it, so we'll be able to scope out our, our targets from a range that is not super as effective or as far as the 10 times scope, but a little bit more suited to a more medium range combat there. And the crosshair is the same too, so unless you've got these scopes side by side using them, the difference here is, I guess, fairly minimal. The recoil, of course, not being as exaggerated by a 10 times scope makes it a little bit easier to control. And now that we're using a weapon that is without the suppressor, so without ace operator and all of that, it feels a little bit more balanced this way. This is totally acceptable damage right here. It doesn't look like I'm getting any incendiary damage either. So we, if we were using these standard rounds, we'd probably be getting a little bit more. But for a little bit of flavor, I've added that round just so we could see the cool little effects that the game gives. See if there's any ones. Well, if... if okay, they don't burn for very long either, so... <laughs> Totally obliterated immersive gunners plus. This is probably that was probably one of the more cruisy runs I'll ever have with this thing. Also, in third person, it's not all that bad. If you've put the weapon away and you've got classic holstered weapons, you can wear the gun and it looks kind of cool, I guess. That's the flesh out one, by the way. So I've made it made it ultra compact, and I could definitely feel the recoil when using that thing. That's for sure. And that was interesting. Don't worry about it. We care about immersion here. Anyways, I'm going to mow the swan down with my explosive version with the automatic receiver. 508 damage from all the way back here. That's pretty gnarly. And we could go ahead and use this thing in bats, but curiously, only getting a couple of shots out of this thing. Even with all of the... I guess it's the only the bats is being reduced by the reflex side a little bit, but even with that, the amount of damage we get just for those explosive shots alone is just massive. We don't have to worry about aiming at all. We could probably have done that fight entirely aiming at the ground around him, and we would have finished it off just fine. So, yeah, a little bit overpowered, but, you know... Maybe for an esoteric weapon like this, you just want to use it every once in a while. Maybe if you are a fan of Imperial Japanese Navy weapons, this might be something nice. But yeah, could probably tone that down a little bit. And of course, the player has autonomy in that respect as well. We've got the damage reducers if you feel like it's too much. I'm going to say that you can go ahead and fix it that way. There we go. All right. 
Since we're already in the mood of sniping ghouls, I guess we'll uh, go and do that again. All right, time for a more of a snipey approach, and we might have to pick off the little ones at first to get this going quickly. But as soon as we can light up the big target, that's when we'll go for it. And it doesn't look like from the sample size of about 15 to 30 that I used on that bloodthirsty with the feral ghoul, it doesn't look like that we're going to be able to get sniper knockdowns with this thing, which is um, unfortunate. I think that might just be the casualty of this thing being a scope, but also not really. And ooh, that was a nasty hit. He's actually hit me a couple of times here, a couple of cheap shots, losing my uh, ability to take this guy out. Maybe we'll switch over to something a little bit more automatic. Yeah, there we go. Perhaps all of these extra projectiles will just keep him at bay. If we can't knock him down, we'll just stagger him like this. We've just got to keep this thing nice and reeled in with its recoil, and then he charged directly over us. Pre-picked the right time to drop from that sand dune, I'll tell you that much. We'll keep on going here. Maybe a few shots in bats. This thing, with the shorter barrel now, you get so many shots. So we'll add a critical in there, and that is it. All right, that's pretty good. And I think there's still some gunners going on shooting all those blokes over there. So we'll take him out. And look, there's Junie Warwick over there. Oh, that's sorry, Janie. Let's just, uh, take care of your gunner problem there. All right, time to hunt death claws under the black cloak of night. And first of all, they're being aggroed by some gunners up there. So yet more gunner trash we have to sort through. There's a sentry butt, and I think there was an assaultron somewhere. I've dealt some damage to it just now. Probably not the best idea. Oh, there it is. Okay, the the death claws have spotted me, but at least I've taken out the <laughs> I've taken out the robots. I think there's one more gunner up there, and I don't think they'll actually be able to see me. And I don't think the death claws are capable of even getting up here. The only instance of climbing that we ever see a Deathclaw do is that section in Concord where it climbs out of the sewer grate. But that's like a scripted event with a one-off animation that we never ever see again. Ah, it's the Invisible Man. He goes down. And now we've got a couple of Deathclaw fish in a barrel to take out. So we'll get the little ones sorted first. And... Seem to be getting good sneak criticals now. The game's not totally notifying me. There we go. Definite sneak criticals, and he is running away. He actually teleported just now. Did you see that? Activating his Slenderman powers. He's actually taken some pretty effective cover behind that um, pylon thingy there, and he still technically sees me, but now we're back into caution. I suppose we'll chase him. Hopefully he doesn't teleport next to me again, because if he does, I'd be in a little bit of strife. Wow, he's really taking off. We have to chase him to the ends of the earth. Luckily for me, the 10 times scope is going to make short work of his cowardice. Oh, there he is. Teleporting again, are we? I see how it is. Hoping for sneak criticals, not happening. No, the death claw, as it turns out, a little bit more perceptive than your average bear, ghoul, or super mutant behemoth. Still doesn't know where I am. Getting a couple of little cheap shots on his body like that was pretty helpful. Maybe we'll switch over to this one. Nah. Let's bring the auto explosive one out again. We'll finish the job that way. So, look, as you can tell, we're just cleaning up these bosses like they're nothing. You can get a whole lot of good damage out with this thing. I suppose the only problem you'll have with this thing is, A, feeding it with 308 rounds. And that might be a problem if you can't carry infinite amounts if you're playing, for example, survival. And, of course, the animation problems might be a big deal breaker for some. But other than that, I think it's a really solid, well-put-together weapon mod that gives... A little bit of a weapon that might not be known, a forgotten weapon, if you will, something lost to time, gives it a little bit of spotlight because every weapon used in a war, it's, it's got a bit of history to it, you know? So I think 
having a more obscure weapon like this, not only we have never seen it before, but, you know, you get to learn about stuff if you want to actually learn more about it, and I get to learn more history and stuff, so I actually quite like it. So I do recommend this mod, despite it being a little bit funky with the animations. Again, if that's a deal breaker, then probably don't download it. But if you are interested in seeing this weapon in your game, check out the link in the description below. It should be down there. Thank you very much for watching, guys.